Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to today's session. Today is probably a bit of a quick learn. We're going to be looking at setting up and applying account statuses within your Sage 50 account software. So my name is Jackie, I'll be taking you through today's session and I am going it alone today so don't have anyone on hand for any questions. So if you do have any questions, please do submit them across to the questions panel and we'll probably get to those at the end of the session today. It is a really quiet session so please do um, bear with me. Um, like I say, we've gone with just one on of a, one of us today um, and we'll hopefully answer all your questions today. Okay, so we'll quickly have a look at the housekeeping just in case this is your first webinar with us. So first of all you are on mute so please bear that in mind you won't be able to speak to me directly but if you do have any questions then do use the questions panel. The icon looks like a speech bubble with the question mark in the middle and that will open up the questions panel for you to submit your questions. There is also a handout for today's session and you can use the icon that looks like a document with the folded corner in order to download a copy of the slides for today. Now, like I said earlier, it's quite a small topic, but it is quite useful. So it might not take us as long as scheduled today, but we'll see how we go with the questions there. So first of all, we're going to look at what is an account status. And then I'm going to show you how you can customise your account statuses. And then also we're going to have a look at the account on hold status and how that works in the software. I'm going to show you customer and supplier defaults and then how to add a status onto a record. And then finally processing transactions to an account that has an on hold status. And like I say at the end, we'll just tie that up with any final questions you may have. Okay, so account status, it's a handy tool that allows you to look at both your customers and suppliers and apply a status to them. And it's in particularly, particularly used for things like credit control. So it might be to reflect that it's a new credit status. It might be that they're a new customer, so you might want to tread carefully with them. It might be that they've exceeded the um, credit limit or that you have just popped them on hold. Some of the statuses can tie in with being on hold. So it might be that they've exceeded their credit limit. So you want to pop a hold on that account. So you can't process any more transactions onto there. If you pop an account on hold, it means you'll get a warning message when you post transactions. But you can set it to stop the account. And that will prevent posting into invoices and credits, sales orders, purchase orders, and also quotations. But we're going to demonstrate all of that in today's session for you. OK, so I'm going to actually just go on to demonstration now. So I'm going to um, pop on to the demo data for today. So this is a really good opportunity for you. If you've got access to your data at the moment, you're more than welcome to follow along at the same time. And in demonstration data, you can log in using the logon of manager and leave the password blank and you will get into the stationery and computer mark mart. Now most of the data will match mine. I have made some changes here and there so it might not match up perfectly but you will have the same data set and you're more than welcome to play around in this data. It won't impact your data at all. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how you can configure the statuses but also look at what's already there. So we're going to pop it into settings and we've been in here a lot lately because we're doing lots of features where you have to set up these in config configuration. So we're going to go into settings and configuration. And in here we do have one named account status. Now all of these here are there by default. OK, so I haven't created any of these ones. These are all here by default. So by um, default, a customer or supplier record would normally have a status of open. So you might have seen that before, you never really thought of, you know, how can I use that? So most of them will be open and that just means you can freely post to those records. 
But bear in mind, you might have things like new customers who are brand new. And if you're still to get to grips with how they pay, their credit terms, etc., you might want to flag them as new just so that you know that they're new customers. Or it might just be that, you know, you want to impress these. So you want that flag on there to indicate that they're a new customer. It might be some you're going to deal with cash only, so you might want to flag those. And it may be some are maybe in a, a not great position with you. So it might be that, you know, you've had really serious bad debt. You may have gone past the bad debt stage and gone on to sort of solicitor's letters. And it may just be that they've exceeded their credit limit or their credit limit needs revisiting. So we've got lots of different statuses here that you can add on. Now, of course, you can add a status if you wanted to. So I'm going to add a new one on here. And when you double click, it just opens. It's just opened on the other window. So it's a very straightforward description. Now, I'm just going to pop in test for today. And then I get to tell it, do I want to mark the account as on hold as a result of this? Now, bear in mind, on hold is going to prevent certain transactions being posted or is going to flag to me that they're on hold. So this is normally an, uh, normally a negative thing, but I suppose you could possibly put it on a new customer just to say this is a new customer and just flag it up. It depends how you use that on hold status. But for the time being, I'm not going to pop an old on hold status on this one. I'm just going to leave that as a as a status in its own right. But you can see there that I do have some that are on hold. So business is closed, gone into liquidation and the bad debt ones as well. OK, so that is how to set up your own statuses. You have up to 99. I'll be honest, I haven't known anyone use more than the defaults, but feel free to explore and experiment and see what works for yourself there. So I'm going to click OK and that's just going to take me out of there. And what I want to do now is just show you that on hold status. OK, so some of those account statuses also had an on hold status. Now, to have a look at this setting, we need to go into settings. Company preferences. And in here, we're looking at the parameters tab. So we've got call charges first. It's the second section we're looking here. OK, and this tells me. Um, what it will do when the account's on hold. So we can set it up to either show a warning each time we post a transaction. So what will happen is it will say this account's on hold, do you wish to continue? Or if it's a situation where we want to stop processing, we can pop a stop on the account. And I will show you both of those, but we're going to start off with the warning. And that's where it would be by default. So I'm just going to click OK on here. And what I'm just going to do next is show you where the account status actually sits on the records. So if I pop into my customers, and I'm just going to pick on my top one here, A1 Design. As you can see there, I've double clicked on it. So you can see it's got a status of closed. But where we can check that is in the Credit Control tab. So in Credit Control, Second from the bottom there, we've got the account status. And that can change at any time. So it might be, you know, they've, they've reopened or I want to change this over to something else. It might have gone into solicitors if they've closed and we've got outstanding invoices. So that can be changed really simply just by changing it in the drop down box there. So we're going to leave that as closed for the time being. And as you can see there, closed at the moment gives me that on hold status. So that's going to cause some um, messaging when we process a transaction for that particular individual. Now, save if we pop them to suppliers. And pop into Mia's here, just bring this across. Again, we've got a credit position. So we might want to do... Um, a credit position and a, an account status. So again, we might want to just flag where our suppliers are in, in their status as well. So it might be that our credit limit has expired with them. We've been placed on hold. Or it may as well be 
that we're in a situation with solicitors. So again, we can pop those flags onto suppliers. It tends to be used more for the customers because they're the ones where you're going to be sort of giving them credit or they're going to be owing you money. So people tend to use it more for customers. And that's why today I will stick more on the customer side than I will on suppliers, but you do have the option to use it there. Now, next, I just want to show you customer and supplier defaults. So when you set up a new customer, um, you do get certain defaults applied to the record automatically. And as you may have noticed, one of those statuses is new. So again, it's just flagging that this is a new customer. You might want to deal with them in a certain way. So we can change that um, default. So it will, it will default to open, but we might want to default it to something else. So I'm just going to go into settings and into customer defaults. Again, let's bring this across. And in here at the bottom, we've got the account status there. So as you can see by default, whenever I create a new customer record, it will give them the status of open. But it might be that we want to just flag them as new. And that might be for a period of say three months or so, then they could change to an open status. That just means when I come to create a new customer, into a new customer record, and pop into credit control, you can see there the account status now says new. So it just takes away that manual task that you may need to do. And it's exactly the same on the supplier defaults as well. So again, if you're setting up a new supplier that, you, that you're working with, settings, supplier defaults, and again, just at the bottom of that first tab, we've got the account status there. So and a status you might be looking at is sort of pre-credit check. So it might be you haven't done a credit check just yet. You might want to flag them to highlight that they haven't yet been checked. OK, so that's a lot of settings. Um, what we're going to look at next is how to actually process some transactions or how that status impacts our um, processing. So as you are aware, we have got a customer who is on hold. And that was the top one in the list there. Now, what I have done in my list so I can see who's on hold is I've actually right clicked on one of the top options there. It doesn't matter which one, just in that dark gray blue area. And what I've done is I've actually added the account on hold option to my list. So I've ticked this one and it means when I look at my customer list, I can see here which ones are on hold. So I actually only have one customer on hold at the moment, but that might be quite handy for you when you're looking for your list of who's on hold. So that's a, just a little tip there. So let's have a look now at processing some transactions for A1 design services. So I'm gonna pop on a batch invoice first of all. And apologies, this just all seems to open on the other window. Whenever I work from home, everything reverts back. So it's opened the batch window for me, but you can see it's then given me this little warning. So it's saying that the account is closed and on hold. I'm going to click on OK. And what happens then is it just leaves the batch window open. So I can leave all the details in, just pop some transaction details in and save and it allows me to continue processing. So although it's got that status to say it's closed and is on hold, it will still let me process a batch invoice on here because at the moment our on hold status is just for a warning. Now let's do the same with an invoice from the invoices and credits module. So if I pop into invoices and credits, and again, I'm just gonna create a new invoice for the same customer, Bring this across. So I'm going to select day one design again. Bear with me, seems to have disappeared. I'll tell you what, we'll pop this one on to hold as well. So let's just check that one. Seems to have just disappeared. We'll see if we can find it again in a moment. So I'm going to pop this one as um, on hold 
and liquidation. And as you can see there, my status for on hold is now yes. So I'm going to pop back into my invoices and credits. Because I've got a search on there, that's why. So I should have joined my own session on filters and searches yesterday and removed my filter. So just make sure you've got all records there at the top and you won't have any missing customers there. So I can see my A1 designs has come back. Um, so if we try it with them first, again, we're getting that message to say the account is on hold. However, it will still let me go ahead and add items on and save. So although it's on hold, we've just popped on warning only, it's just going to warn me. So I can still go and pop on more invoices. And that could be, you know, things like the credit limit is expired. It might be that that is underway. Somebody's redoing the credit um, the credit checks. We still want to be able to process for that customer or that supplier in the meantime. What we're going to do next though is we're going to look at the account on hold status changing. So I'm going to pop back into settings and company preferences and back into the parameters tab here. And within here, this time we're going to change it from show the warning on each change to stop the account. So this means anything with an on hold status is going to stop the account from being processed in theory. So again, I'm going to go back into my customers and I just want to show you where it's slightly different, slightly odd on this one. OK, so if I go back into my customers and I process an, um, a batch invoice for A1 Designs, I have the warning. However, on a batch invoice, although the account is on stop, it still lets me do the batch invoice. Now that does cause some confusion and that's possibly because we're not processing anything like an invoice or an order or anything we're issuing out. This could be um, this could be like an internal transaction that we've maybe missed off previously, but it won't do it on a batch invoice. However, if we use the same customer and pop into invoices and credits and try and use A1 Design, this is where it prevents us from posting. And the same thing will happen in your sales orders and in your quotations. So it won't let us go any further at this point. So yes, it will allow us to do the batch, but it won't allow us to do the um, invoice from invoices and credits or quotations or sales orders. So if I click on the OK to here, you can see it has actually removed the customer reference. If I try and add it again, I'm just going to go in a bit of a circle here. Again, I'm going to be told I can't create any transactions until the account's taken off hold. So it really does stop us processing in the relevant modules. And that is something that does cause a little bit of confusion. So just wanted to make that bit really, really clear. So that's pretty much it for account status. Like I say, it's really, really useful for credit control and keeping tabs on your customers in terms of, you know, who should be we giving a little bit more attention to, who should be we we be being careful to when we're considering popping invoices on. So I'm going to pop back to the slides. Just do a little summary. If you've got any questions, now's a fab time to get your questions across. So really do appreciate any questions you've got. Please do get them over and we'll try and get them answered for you. And we'll just do a quick summary of today's session. OK. So it allows us to categorise our customers. And normally this is to reflect credit status. They can be configured, so just like some of the other features we've gone through lately, like custom fields and analysis fields, you can do that within settings and configuration. You can also decide whether a status places the customer on hold. And that on hold status can also subsequently be configured within settings company preferences as to whether or not it stops the account or just provides you with a warning before processing. 
Okay, so if there's any questions, get them across. I'm just going to really quickly talk to you about our webinars that are coming up over the next few weeks. Now, we do have a really big focus on bank feeds. So bank feeds has been around for, um, I think, seven years now, version 22, and we're, we're now in version 29. And we are doing some changes to how it looks and feels. It makes it a much better experience for you as a customer. But we're aware it's change and what we're trying to do is be um, proactive rather than reactive and let you see that in advance so that you know what you're signing up for when you start to do your install for 29.2. So we do thoroughly recommend joining that session. The update isn't available until late August but we are showing you in advance and we have one tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock and also for the next three weeks we're going to have them twice a week. Beyond that, we'll probably still be running them weekly. So we're going to have lots and lots of focus on improved bank feeds. So if you use bank feeds, definitely come along to one of those sessions. If you don't and you're interested, again, you're more than welcome to join. We will show you how to set up bank feeds. And today we've touched on analysis fields can be changed, the um, custom fields. Abby's actually doing a session on that on Tuesday at two o'clock, and that's going to be a quick learn. So please do join her to go through filtering by analysis field, focusing more so on your customers list. OK, so that brings us to the end of the session for today. As I said, it is a bit of a quick learn because it's a much smaller topic. But if you've got any questions, please do fire away. I'll hang on for just a few moments there to see if anyone's got any. Um, but I'm going to put myself on mute for just a few moments. We'll be back just before we end the session there. all quiet on the question front there today it has been a short session but like i said it's a really really small feature but a very useful feature as well so i'm going to look to end the session there so thank you very very much for joining us today um take care and fingers crossed we'll see you on another session very soon take care for now <laughs>